Okay, in this video, I'm going to use an Arduino and an Ethernet shield to uh, basically build a small web server that's going to output the uh, average temperature using two DS18B20 temperature sensors. So it'll it'll show the current temperature and then track the min and max temperatures and then display those in a HTML web page. Okay, so this is the, the schematic of the circuit, and you can see um, I'm using an Arduino Uno and an Ethernet shield. Um, I have them split apart in this diagram, but actually the Ethernet shield uh, plugs into the Arduino, so they're stacked together. Um, I'm using two of the DS18B20 uh, temperature sensors. You could use one, I'm using two, and then I'm taking the average temperature of the two so maybe um, you'll get a more accurate reading accurate value okay so it's the the center pin of these temperature sensors that output the uh, temperatures and with the one wire protocol um, you just connect those together and they're pulled high to the 5 volt power rail with that uh, 4.7 kilo ohm resistor on the right and then uh, the readings are input into the Arduino digital pin uh, 3, you see the, the yellow line, and then pins 1 and 3 of those sensors are both um, connected to ground, and this is what's called uh, parasitic power mode, so the chips themselves, excuse me, the, the sensors themselves are actually powered also through the I.O. pin, and if you're, you don't have to use the parasitic power mode. If you don't, you would connect one of the pins. I think it, you might have to look that up. Maybe one pin would go to 5 volts and one to ground. But in, in parasitic, parasitic power mode, both pins 1 and 3 uh, go to ground for each chip. Okay, so this is the uh, Arduino sketch uh, that runs the circuit. And we have a, a couple libraries. You need the SPI library and the Ethernet library for the Ethernet shield. And then for the the DS uh, 18B20 temperature sensors, you need the one wire library and the Dallas temperature library, and um, set up some variables to uh, keep track of the uh, temperatures, and initialize uh, the one wire bus, and then the sensors. Uh, each sensor has a unique address that's eight bytes wide. Uh, I used a different sketch to find find those and plugged them in here. And for the Ethernet shield, you set your own MAC address. There's, there's at least the shield I have. There's no MAC address associated with it, so you, you just make one up, uh, and then you set your IP address. So if your router is using DHCP, you're going to have to uh, override that for this MAC address and set this set a static. Uh, internet address. Okay, so we uh, uh, initialize the Ethernet server on port 80 and then um, set the resolution of the sensors. You can probably go with uh, the precision goes, I think it's from 9 to 12. 12 is the highest precision. Unless you have, if you if you go with high precision, it slows them down a little bit, but I don't think it really matters unless you're taking multiple measurements per second or something like that. You can go with the, the highest precision. Okay, so then in the loop, I call a, a, a request temperatures. Okay, and then then I, that that actually talks to the. Uh, the DS uh, 18B20 sensors and tells it you're ready to get a temperature. Then I call a get temperature function that I wrote for each of the two sensors. So then it it calls get temp C, which is the Celsius. You pass it the address, and then I also want the Fahrenheit temperature and the the Dallas um, Dallas temperature library provides a function to take that. Celsius value and convert it to Fahrenheit. Okay, so then I track the min and max values based on the latest reading. Um, 
then it checks to see if there's a, a Ethernet client available. So if somebody's hitting that IP address on port 80, it detects it, and if it, then it it's going to write out a web page, HTML web page. So that's what all this client print line stuff is. You know, uh, prints all the uh, the values there, and if we go go to the web page. So this is what the web page looks like. Um, so it's going to display the current temperature in Fahrenheit, the min and max temperatures uh, s since the circuit's been running. And if we look at the source page, it's pretty pretty simple web page. This meta HTTP dash equiv equal refresh content five that makes this page refresh every five seconds so you can see it. Uh, you can see it's spinning up here, there, and it's going to refresh these values every five seconds. Uh, so anyway, there you have it. It's um, it's pretty easy to put together. Um, Ethernet shields, they're kind of expensive. Uh, I think they've come down. Uh, you'd obviously use a Wi-Fi shield. Ethernet shields are kind of getting out of date now. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video.